I have to admit that after International Gorillas, we all felt the pressure was on for our next movie reveal. I mean, honestly, could we ever find another movie that wouldn't seem like a masterpiece when compared to that? Well, at 10.36 p.m. local time on Monday, June 15th, I learned an important lesson. In the world of religious cinema, there is no solid floor. There is always a worse movie. As evidence of that fact, I submit See Me Dance. That's letter C, by the way, not the word, which is as clever as the movie ever gets. This 2009 film was recommended to us by a number of listeners and also led a list on Crack.com of the Christian movies that you won't believe are serious. So we decided to give it a try, and damn, am I glad we did. And, of course, suffering alongside us through it all was our good friend Eli Bosnick. Eli, welcome back to the show. Oh, thanks for having me, guys. Now, before we jump into the abject lunacy of this film, let me open things up with a question I think that best sums up the overall experience of See Me Dance. And that question, of course, is what the fuck did we just watch? Oh, I have absolutely no idea. I have ab- this movie. This movie moves as quickly as international gorillas move slowly. Uh-huh. It's like watching a normal movie. It's like watching a normal crazy person's dream on fast forward. I have no idea what happened, but I came several times. That's all I know. If this is the Christian movie, if you were looking for a Christian movie to jerk off to, See Me Dance is my number two recommendation. After. Kirk Cameron saving Christmas. I was assuming. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this was the craziest fucking shit. It did seem at times like we were just flipping through channels and getting different parts of different movies. Right. If there were a TV in hell that only played cut footage from Buffy the Vampire Slayer episodes, that's <laughs> – that, and you just – Kept going through the channels. That is that is see me dance. See me dance is the stuff that Josh Whedon was like, oh my god. Well, we can't have this on the show. <laughs> and then someone found those clips in a dumpster, and they were like, great, let's make a movie. You know, apparently this movie was the brainchild of writer, director, and male lead Greg Robbins, who you'll remember is the extra that Reese pulled out of the truck at the Tiki Motel in the original Terminator. That's true, by the way. Really? Um, and this is what happens when you give a movie to a. Uh, lunatic extra from 1984. Okay, so set it up, uh, set it up for us, Eli. Tell us the story here of, of of See Me Dance. So the way we're introduced to this movie, which never comes back, by the way, is just 1992. Yep. <laughs> just, we just, it's important that we know. And I wrote all the best movies are set in 1992. <laughs> so in 1992, there's this girl and oh wait, sorry. The beginning, again, this movie is so confusing. It's like a Rubik's Cube done uh, upside down inside you. With 26 Um, different colors, yes. uh Right, exactly. Uh, So basically, there's this girl. She's a dancer. Her mom died in a car crash. The first thing we see is her mom being chased by a truck <laughs> that they where they clearly could not afford to hit the car with the truck because it kind of keeps swerving slightly close to the car, but yeah. not that close. <laughs> and the guy, the guy clearly stole this from Terminator Two. He was in Terminator One. You said this yeah. is definitely the scene with the liquid metal guy chasing them in an eighteen wheeler. Absolutely, with, with no budget. Yeah, I wrote thirty seconds, and we've seen the same shot three times. <laughs> right. I can already tell I've had dinner with bigger budgets than this movie. <laughs> So the first thing, the first like solid two minutes of this movie is just a woman looking in her rearview mirror mm-hmm. and occasionally like directly to camera being like, why don't you leave me alone? <laughs> and then just, which by the way, if you think we're going to find out what the fuck happened, you are wrong. Nope. <laughs> you are mistaken. <laughs> we can guess, but who the fuck knows? Yep. Yep. Someone in a truck decides to kill some woman and that's how this movie opens. Begins and for all we know ends. Could have just that could have been a totally. If you told me that, like, oh no, that they, when they were making the DVD, they had taped over the beginning of the movie <laughs> with like the beginning of a Lifetime film, and then they just sort of stuck with it because they didn't want to have to reshoot. I'd be like, yeah, sure, no, I get it. Yeah, that makes perfect it. sense. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, no, I get it. Makes sense to me. So she's dead, and then. There's a bunch of footage of, like, fake family footage of a little girl growing up and then a good 18 minutes of little girls in ballet class. And let me tell you, if I wanted to watch 18 minutes of little girls in ballet class, I'd ask the government for my computer back. (laughs) I found that 
very, very erotic. Well, I got to say, <laughs> there was a lot of that in this movie. Like, there was, like, most Christian movies don't have any 13 year old girl cleavage. This movie did not go seven fucking minutes without a half dressed prepubescent girl on screen somewhere. That cannot be a fucking coincidence. Yeah, no, this was like, so, it was like the cinematographer and this guy met up for the first time, and it was like, so tell me, what are you going for with this movie? Well, I like to jerk off to Gilmore Girls. All right. <laughs> I've got it. Stop feeling you've hit gold. I know exactly how to shoot this Because the hot old mom, no. No. No, 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 no. no. No, and I gotta say, it, during this credit sequence with the with the home movies and everything, you really get an idea how much thought they put into this movie because over at the top of this we're getting the credits, which are in like a fucking Middle Earth Lord of the Rings font over yeah. ballet dancing and everything, the fucking score in the movie, the acting, nothing ever matches up. You know, this Epic. this movie was like having peanut butter and cottage cheese sandwiches. Yeah, and also another big key to this movie is that um, if you were worried that because this is a dance movie, you might have to see someone who has the ability to dance during no. it, <laughs> do not worry. <laughs> Nobody who acts, who speaks in this movie can dance, which means that the entire movie, you'd think that you're casting a dance movie, you'd be like, so you can dance, right? Do not worry. They did not make sure that that was true. No. They spent no. the entire film cutting away from people's faces to like, the one stunt double they bought who could dance, and then back to the girl's face being like, I am dancing. <laughs> it can tell that I'm dancing because I look concentrated. Dance. So now we meet our, our heroine, Sherry, and I got to tell you, I never got the blindest fucking sense of how old this girl was supposed to be because the actress is like 21, but she's supposed to be a teenager. Uh, she... Her lines are written as though she's 13. All of her friends are 12. So anyway, all I know is that she's Sherry, she dances, and she's the main character. Right, and she has a dad. Mm -hmm. Vince. She, she, yeah, and her dad. That's, and and that he is... absolutely never has the top three buttons on his shirt done at any point in this fucking movie. No, not, not, even, not even close. And also, like, we know that she likes to dance, but... I feel like someone this is this movie approaches dance like someone had described dance to aliens like someone watched the, what's that Julia Stiles movie where she goes to Juilliard Oh hell if I know no. It's the the step up or whatever it is oh, someone okay. watched that movie it's like someone watched the first 15 <laughs> minutes of any dance movie and then they beamed that into space to creatures that never saw humans and then they were like dancing is where there are trials and auditions, and it's hard and difficult. Because like, that's – no one knows anything about dancing in the movie. And the proof of this is that there's no action – no one at any point in this movie does anything close to any form of dance that anyone has ever heard of ever. They're practicing ballet, but they never do ballet. The one dance piece in the film is, like, lyrical or we just crazy people walking in a circle. It's just – Nothing in this movie is from the planet Earth. No, no. It, it, I liked um, very early on in the movie, too, you meet the uh, the dance instructor who I, I, I called her Nazi Nurse Ratchet. Oh, yeah. The, right. the chick in the uh, – uh, And spoiler the alert, she's, uh, she's going to come back and make no fucking sense later <laughs> nope. on. Okay. Like later all the on, other we're gonna things. Get, we're going to get a twist that doesn't make any fucking sense or matter. So uh, <laughs> tune in for that. So she's she's dancing, and the first thing we see is she dances. She does two plies, and then she's exhausted like she jogged 58 miles. Right. This is our introduction. She's like, plie, plie, and then she falls down on the ground, to which I wrote, you're not supposed to fall down on the ground when you practice. <laughs> That's not how At no point, no. And we haven't – we're about to be introduced to the fact that she is sick, mm -hmm. and that's how they're telling us that. But we don't know that, so we're just supposed to think she <laughs> practiced so hard that she was like, in my legs! <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes when you do two plies, your legs just give out just a pool of widening shit underneath her. <laughs> oh, my God, honey, what happened? I did three plies. Well, God, you're lucky to be alive. <laughs> But speaking of being lucky to be alive, as it turns out, she is, because this movie just wouldn't be after school special enough if somebody wasn't dying. So uh, apparently right. Sherry collapses. Dad takes her to the hospital. Takes her to the doctor. 
uh, where she gets her test done. She immediately comes home from the tests and we meet her friends who you could put a gun to my head. I could not tell you anything about these girls. They have the power of invisibility. I couldn't tell you anything about them. The only thing I can tell you about them is that the dad does way too much touching of them to be appropriate. (laughs) Every time he is in a scene with them, he's like, hey, girls, how's it going? Tickle, tickle. It's just never a moment where he has appropriate daughter, friends of my daughter touching with these girls. Well, and I got to say, because the guy who played the dad, that's the guy who wrote and directed it, the Terminator Extra. And it was at this point in the movie that I really realized what we were watching. This is where we get the mall scene. You know, she's like, well, I can't sit around and wait and find out if my, my tests are. Let's go to the mall. And we get right. this weird mall sequence where you suddenly realize that you're watching a movie that was written by that middle-aged fat guy that sits outside of Belk Hudson's pretending that his wife is going to come out eventually watching little girls run around a fucking mall. Yeah. Like, that's what yeah. we were watching. Like I said, this was a Christian movie where all of the little girls' cleavage was showing. And, and and like I said, he was writing in roles where, like, hey, you know what? If I write this girl as my daughter, I can hug up all on her. Like, there was just some really creepy shit going on with this guy in this movie. Yeah. Listen, I'm not allowed to get within 100 feet of a school zone anymore, and this movie weirded me out. <laughs> I was – so, and also just, like, their their time in the mall – was so obviously like like they'd never even spoken to teenagers because it was like, well, what do teenagers do to the mall? I don't know. They probably go to the perfume counter and uh, run up and just, down the you know, escalator, stare at the various scents. Right, run up and down the escalator. One of them falls asleep in a massage chair, and the other two just come up, and you can tell like it's a Christian movie, so they can't do anything like mean to her, so they're just like, eh, you're asleep in a massage chair, <laughs> and they just fucking run away. <laughs> Again, everything in this movie makes no fucking sense. And it's all accompanied with Christian rock Uh that's trying not to be Christian rock. (laughs) Obviously, because that's all they could get their hands on was Christian rock. So it's all like, hey there, we're just teenagers having fun with Jesus. And then we're walking down and we're just living our lives with Jesus. (laughs) It's just very clearly like... Someone was like, do you have anything that sounds like normal music but was written by a crazy person? Oh, yeah. We got a ton of that. Oh, yeah, yeah. A ton of that. It's got Jesus written in there. Don't worry. No one's listening. Sneak it in for the first two minutes before you start uh, talking about Jesus. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. Tori Amos Jesus is my new uh, Rush cover band. (laughs) Well, now, I got to say, there was a lot of – you know, because the movie itself had that feel too because for the first 15 minutes – they're just kind of littering in the Jesus stuff. You know, the movie's not about Jesus and religion quite yet, but they keep littering in stuff like, you know, like he's calling his, you know, big black pastor with watermelon biceps here. Are you guys coming to a Bible study? Well, of course we're coming to Bible study, Pastor. Just has nothing to do with anything that's going on, but just to, like, remind you, throw out a little breadcrumb and say, yes, this is a Jesus movie. Right, because right. otherwise the the old people that this movie was meant for would stop watching. If right. they don't mention Jesus, be like, I don't know, maybe this is, oh, it's okay, they said Jesus, they said Jesus. <laughs> I thought I'd have to switch back to jazz. <laughs> No, I've got to say, honestly, like the – act. okay, so let's talk briefly about the acting in this movie because, honestly, no one should have to watch acting this bad if no one's taking it up the ass. Yeah, that is 100% how I feel. This was like if you filmed – if you took people out of like a children's prison and you were like, well, we're going to reduce your sentence by two months – if you're in this horrible movie, <laughs> that's how the acting is for everybody in it. And the, the best example of this is the um, the paramedic. This is jumping back a little, but when the mom dies in the car crash, uh-huh. they've got the pre-crashed car, right? Yes. And the dad, again, another theme from these movies that repeats, cops never stop anyone from running over to dead bodies. No one ever stops someone from contaminating a crime scene. It's just like, so he runs over, he sees that the woman is dead. And this is supposed to be the younger version of the dad. And he very clearly like gets on his knees and we've got music over it. And he gets on his knees and he's like, no. And then the paramedic obviously makes the choice to hug him and hold him in his arms. (laughs) This this is a paramedic who's supposed to be on the scene. And the guy's like, no, my wife is dead. And the paramedic is like, all right, this is your chance, Tony. You didn't take that community acting class. (laughs) You're one of those good paramedics who hugs people and holds them real tight when they've lost someone. And it's just, and I'm like, is that his lover? No, that's just a random man who's there. This person does not. These are strangers. 
a stranger has chosen to hold him in his arms. And I mean, every line in the movie has like the emotion of the line worked into the line. Like people will say like, I'm so angry and let me tell you why, or I'm so sad or I'm so scared. Like actually in the line, because I think that the writer recognized that, okay, nobody's going to know you're supposed to be sad here unless I put it in there. Unless we right, actually have exactly. that come out of your mouth. Right. You know, we shouldn't smoke opium before acting. So <laughs> since, we, since we can't keep you guys, since you all apparently can't move your faces or voices, I'm just going to add it because there's moments where uh, it's it's later on. So spoiler alert, but we're um, after we find out what she's got, uh -huh. which I'll get to, you know, what? I'm going to come back to it. So I'm going to jump. <laughs> just remind me at when she gets home, but later. So, so she's at the mall with her friends and then she faints. Right? Uh-huh. She faints, and she and so they go to the doctor again to get her test results? This is one of those things where we're like, oh, I feel like they should have put this in the first scene. But they bring right. her back, <laughs> and the doctor tells her she has advanced stage leukemia. Yes. Which apparently no one noticed. <laughs> no. It, having advanced stage leukemia without anyone noticed is like, so we've discovered your arms fell off. <laughs> What? Yes, apparently your arms have fallen off. Oh my god, I didn't know! I knew I was having trouble picking things up. It's the idea that she would have an advanced stages of leukemia and this is the first time she right. would go to the doctor is fucking insane. She would be like, so have you been pooping blood? Oh, for at least a year. <laughs> Nothing but just hot red blood spilling out of me every orifice. I cannot... Stop shitting blood. The question is when am I not shitting blood? Am I right? Well, that's not normal. Yeah, I have cancer. I have blood cancer. I'm real sick. <laughs> she has advanced stage leukemia and that she no one seems, knows. She seems and, mildly inconvenienced by that, too. Oh, they yeah. tell her. Oh, that is the worst. The, the evilest <laughs> delivery from the doctors. So your daughter has leukemia and the dad's like, okay, wow. Yeah, that's... um. That's pretty bad news. But don't worry, honey. I'm going to tell the doctor to treat it. Doctor, <laughs> please treat it. And the doctor's like, wow. Wow, this is, this is really awkward. You didn't let me finish. I was going to say your daughter has leukemia, and it's way beyond the point of treatment, and she's definitely going to die. I, I really got to learn to plow right through that sentence from now on. You have leukemia, and that kills you. You're going to die from leukemia. Maybe last like that. Maybe I do leukemia last. I gotta, I gotta learn to power talk. And, so, anyways, <laughs> you have leukemia and you are gonna die. And, and her response, I call her response, and her dad, I call it lukewarm. Yeah, they, they, they were at not, best. not very happy. Yeah, I mean, that's like finding cancer. out you got an STI that you can get a shot for. That's the reaction they gave. Right. It's like, oh, you got one of them. And it's just like, all right, give me the shot. Don't tell my wife. That is the level <laughs> of reaction that we got to her advanced stage leukemia. And, and, his reaction of like, well, you know, you got to make her better, Doc, is like someone who's never heard of cancer. Right. Let alone leukemia. Just like, so what? She got to take a pill once a day? <laughs> Don't stop taking them even though she feels better? You, give her a pack or, you know, because I know antibiotics sometimes make the bacteria strongerness. So you're going to vitamins? Should she do that emergency? <laughs> A non-existent reaction. Copay and apparently, no. in that moment, a spark is kindled. Apparently. We'll find out about later. <laughs> and never come back to. Don't no, worry. Uh, no. So nothing. she goes home, and she has her, like, a lot of this movie is just, like, her her mourning process, which is just, like, why well, even bother? Like, her way of dealing with the fact that she has um, deadly cancer is just, like, I don't even fucking care. Because we see her in the bathroom <laughs> About to put on make put on makeup and then she doesn't and we're like oh because why put on makeup when you're just gonna die <laughs> right <laughs> and that's also she grabs her cross around her neck at that point just remind everybody this is a Jesus movie we're getting to the Jesus grandma don't turn it off don't turn it off <laughs> see Christian see the cross <laughs> oh, okay good <laughs> I'll give I'll you five my, more minutes <laughs> I'll put my giant remote back down <laughs> put my feet back into this automatic foot <laughs> bath giant I got numbers that are shaped like the numbers yeah right, exactly oh my god i love by the way this is a weird random thing but the dad at one point comes in the friends are all having a sleepover or whatever the dad comes in and he starts having these like flashbacks of when she was a baby and the baby in the flashbacks is a little chinese kid i yep. mean it's not even the same fucking race as the girl playing the fucking 
like, they just went and grabbed a baby off of a swing. They're like, go get me that baby. <laughs> I need a baby for this next shot. If you told me that all of the like previous, all of the like past footage is something he like, he ran behind the counter at a Kinko's and just scooped up a <laughs> right. bunch of stuff and <laughs> ran out again. And they were like, who the fuck was that guy? And then he just turned it into a movie. I would be zero percent surprised if I saw my baby pictures. Just right. I'd be like, yeah, sure. He just strolled behind the counter at a CVS and he was like, "Yeah, I'm a regional manager. I'm gonna need to confiscate these." For <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so then she has the moment with her dad where he's like, "We have to pray." And as per usual in Christian movies, someone challenges that terrible idea, and the other person's like, shut your mouth. So she's like, why should I pray? What's that going to do? And he's like, J- all right. Reverse the That's thing it. where God gives you blood cancer? I don't know. I don't know. And then she, and then she says, again, talking about the acting earlier, she says one of my favorite lines in the movie, stop <laughs> loving me. Stop yes. loving me. Exactly. I wrote that one down, too. <laughs> Stop loving me. <laughs> and what I wanted more than – if I ever get crazy billionaire money, I'm going to make a shot-for-shot shot remake of this movie <laughs> where up until that line, and then he just goes, okay, and then he jumps in the air, and it's the breakfast theme end. Like, Don't you <laughs> – there's a montage of him fucking hookers and doing blow off tits <laughs> while she dies in a basement trying to feed herself soup. <laughs> be a great film it would be better than this yeah so then we deal with like so we deal with the him being like one of the subplots of this movie is like she's being kind of a bitch about dying guys (laughs) one of the major like character moments is where he has to sit her down and he's like honey i know you've got a blood cancer that's gonna kill you but you're being a downer about it (laughs) so so she goes to dance auditions, or auditions, whatever. yeah, which is where we learn, as I said before, that no one who has been hired as an actress for this movie knows how to dance. So we see the weirdest, like Lars Van Trier did Acid, fucking cut together sequence where it's just like the back of someone's head who can dance, the front of her face who cannot dance, the back of someone's <laughs> ear who can, the front of her face who can. And so she makes the dance team, right? This is the thing that this whole fucking... We spent 30 minutes of of our lives, which will eventually end in entropy and darkness, to find out that this fucking girl makes the dance team. And she's like, cool. I mean, she does not... She could not care less, and neither do fucking I. Right. It's just like... And she's just like, oh, I made the dance team. And then she just leaves, and we're like, well, I don't know what to care about anymore, movie. (laughs) Don't care about that. I want her to just go home and eat chips for the rest. Just 40 minutes of her eating chips. Just like, I don't fucking care. (laughs) So she goes home. She has another heart-to-heart with her dad where (laughs) she asks, why do I have to die? Which is a very valid question. Mm. And her dad replies with... He says, I've been asking myself that too, right? Yep. And that's it. (laughs) That's tricky. Uh, are you evil, maybe? Do you sin ever? You might deserve it. I don't know. Maybe you deserve it. We should look into this. And they just they just sit there for a second. It's literally like a pause. They're just like, I've been thinking about that, too. <laughs> huh. That's so a scratcher. Like, that's a scratcher. <laughs> what do you think about Deflategate, huh? <laughs> it's like, it's, it's moving on. Um, do you know Oreos are vegan? <laughs> just, <it's> so, <laughs> so then... Her, she has a friend intervention where her friends come over and they're like, what's going on with you? You're being really bitchy since you started to die. <laughs> and her friends say the one of the weirdest things in the world where <laughs> they say, just let us love you. Right. And I'm expecting some bomb chicka wow wow and the acting to pay off at that point, but no. No, 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 no. I, me too. Oh, that's – you know what? That's a really good way to describe the acting of this movie. The mm-hmm. acting of this movie is like an 80s porn if you cut out all the fucking. Yes, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Just like, well, I wonder who could help me fix these pipes. <laughs> Jesus? <laughs> oh, uh, Jesus. Damn. Not, uh, not your dick. That's disappointing. <laughs> so then then we watch 
their the date between the father and the doctor. We cut over and the father and the doctor are on a date. And to, while watching this scene, I wrote, I would love to watch these people from a cruise ship ad go on a date, but I have to hammer a nail into my dick. That's what it's like. When I, it's like watching an inexpensive cruise ship ad that entire day. It's just like, they have stink and fish. <laughs> And the conversation between the two of them is just insane. It's like, well, I believe that there is something between us, but we did meet under some very unusual circumstances. Just unbelievably yeah, when bad. Yeah, you refused to treat my dying daughter. Yeah, and that was it. That was the circumstance. Was like this. Oh, right, right. I wasn't sure if you were the dying daughter guy. Or yeah, the, the it was. This is awkward guy. now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, it's, it's weird. I need to get a day book. It's just they all <laughs> blend together. <laughs> By the way, she's wearing the ugliest necklace in the scene I've ever seen right. in my entire life. I, I, I noticed it. That's how ugly <laughs> it was. So then they're at dinner, and then all of a sudden, she's psychic? Telepathic? Oh, my God. Because what the... she summons him home with her mental powers. She's just like, Dad, where are you? And he's like, my daughter needs me. And just fucking leaves dinner, leaves her to pay the check. Gross. <laughs> just fucking pieces out of the date. And she just sits there and is like, oh, all right. Well, I guess I'll enjoy this delicious buffet by myself. <laughs> yeah, the psychic oh. dad-daughter connection thing was a completely unnecessary little diversion for this movie that made it even more insane. Well, because it was like, I guarantee you they made the movie and they were like, oh, um, he goes – he could, those two times when he comes and rescues her, she doesn't call him or anything. How does right. he know? <laughs> <laughs> was just like, well, you know, we're still Telep doing voiceover. Why does she just have, like, super telepathy or something? <laughs> Jesus. They can be connected like E.T. and mind. Elliot. <laughs> right, exactly. They can just, like, come home. <laughs> so he goes home, and they have a nice heart-to-heart. -heart, and she wears a North Face jacket. <laughs> and then, oh, and then we see him the next day at work. We see him the next day of work where he works at a cologne company. Yeah, like and a now we recognize guy. it's very clear that someone in this movie had a connection to like seven bottles of cologne. His <laughs> cologne comes back to the movie as many times as possible. Someone was like, all right, so what can everyone contribute? I have nine bottles of cologne. Great. That's the, we're, we're going to have a He's perfume a counter maker. and he works at a right, cologne that's company. That's taken care of, done. So I just want to paint this picture of him at work, by the way. Him at work... His workplace is someone's living room that has a large window with a table pushed in front of it. So it looks like the boss has like a corner office or something. But it, like they're clearly yeah. going for like he he works in a building or something. But like they're on the ground floor because out the window you can see like telephone poles and shit. You know, but they're still right. obviously trying to go and... for high rise with the shot. Yeah. Right. <laughs> see the parking lot of the Denny's that this person lives <laughs> right, next right. to. Right, <laughs> right. And also, he's giving a presentation in, again, a way that is exclusive to Christian movies, which is like, gentlemen, we're all here to do business because we're business people who work at a real company <laughs> and we've never been outside a church in our whole lives. I mean, wait, we have. We have been outside of a church. It's just like this. With <laughs> business. <laughs> who wants to buy this cologne? They'll love it. They'll love it. We'll put a man on the front. There That's you what go. people will want, right? And, of course, their conversation is being drowned out by Christian techno pop. Yes, for in the no background. fucking reason, yeah. <laughs> He's just like, yeah, so I think and in the background it's just like, I'm going to be with Jesus my whole life long. <laughs> <laughs> the score was so fucking weird. So, again, very clearly all Christian rock groups pretending to be other artists there was christian tori amos uh -huh. there was christian techno pop it was just it, it was like if you didn't listen they were like don't worry people won't listen to the music because if you didn't listen closely you wouldn't notice that they just slid jesus into the lyrics every now and then there was very clearly moments where it was like jagged little pill with jesus <laughs> just like trying to be all the different versions so then we see her at her dance concert again um, and there's Fat Stage Manager, who is my favorite character in the movie. <laughs> which they're all getting ready. And then Fat Stage Manager, who's the only fat character in the entire... There's yeah. two fat well, characters. They're both stage managers. Well, and Dad. Oh, yeah. And, of course, Dad. 
And when it comes up, they're like, so I'm really nervous. I don't know if, I, and she's just like, you guys are on. <laughs> He's just out of help. It's the greatest mom. You got to watch it because it's so clearly someone's niece. Because she just, she just like tromps into frame back to camera and it's just like, time for you dance, go dance, dance, dance. <laughs> Just poops away. We never off into the sunset. I want to see her movie so much more than I want to see this. But she just comes home. How was the show, honey? Good. I made dance, dance. Go into my room, punch myself in the vagina till I fall asleep. <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, every every one of these Christian movies should you should get an Eli <laughs> spinoff, I do believe. Because I'm still dying to see the fucking neighbors from the Kirk Cameron movie. movie that... Yeah, the neighbors for, and then Midget and a Muslim. Oh, yeah, fuck. How did I forget about Midget and a Muslim? <laughs> yeah. an HBO miniseries. <laughs> so then she she dances, and while she's dancing, the devil appears. <laughs> And if you were if you were thinking, oh, that's a fun Buffy reference he made, you no. should know that the devil is wearing exactly the vampire makeup from Buffy and the Vampire Slayer. <laughs> I mean, for literally exactly the same makeup. Someone saw Buffy the Vampire Slayer and they were like, yep, that's what we're doing. That is what the devil looks like. He looks like the Buffy vampires. So it's very confusing to turn and see the devil and be like, oh, he's. The devil's a vampire. Is that you, well, Angel? And it's a little weird because, like, up to this movie, this has been a movie about a girl who dances and has leukemia. We are 35 fucking minutes into this movie, and all this, oh, and the devil's here, by the way. We forgot to mention this is the devil <laughs> is part of this goddamn movie, and we're going to introduce that as a plot element at 37 minutes in. Right. So when you and thought we, that cancer was the antagonist, no, no, no. it's Satan. <laughs> it's Satan, and we know it's Satan because we shoot him at the top of a set of stairs covered in After Effects birds. If you showed <laughs> this movie to the inventor of After Effects, he would kill himself in front of you. <laughs> He'd be like, oh no, not on my watch. <laughs> Cut his throat with I'm his sure own I'm sure you're fingernails. thinking of the chandelier scene there as well, where they decide that her mission is to save the soul of her atheist friend. Right, and then the chandelier lights up and is like, meh, and, both just, and it's just like, guys, keep looking up. It's going to look great afterward. Don't worry. <laughs> no, it does not. It does, it no. does not. Great. No. It's so, and then there's a great moment. So she sees the devil, and she's like, eh, was he there? Was he not? And she, she gets on the back of a random motorcycle. Just a motorcycle pulls up, and she just rides away on the back of a motorcycle. Yeah, she says psychically, someone's... I need a ride. And the motorcycle guy stops and says, you need a ride. And yep. that's what actually happens in the fucking movie. And this is not a character, by the way, that we've met or that ever comes back or anything like that. Or a power that we have established nope. that she has. No, uh-uh. She just gets on a mo And I was like, oh, is this she, she and that guy have their own movie now. Nope. <laughs> He's just giving her a ride. And then we have a great moment where the devil just walks after them. We just see the devil again, and he's like, oh, fuck, they're, they're on a bike. I get, oh, this is why he needs to jog, Lucifer. Come on, man. <laughs> just sort of hustles after them. And Lu Lucifer, by the way, Satan is played by a Latino guy who's maybe 12 pounds overweight. So there's just everything about his actions in the movie. He's like, I'm going to get you. <sighs> oh, sorry, I just jogged up the... You know, I had chimichangas for lunch, and I shouldn't have... You gotta eat and then give yourself a minute. Oh, I'm not nauseous, I'm just full. <laughs> it's like all of his lines and all of his delivery in this film. Well, so, and, and, why, and why Eli is the devil after this ballerina? Because we are about to discover when her magic... Pa she has the worst superpower in the world. Right. <laughs> When people touch her, they see the crucifixion uh -huh. and are saved. Yep. Which... And the way we learn this is she's at school and she's talking to her friend by her locker because they, they have that moment where she's like, you got to save your friend. And she's like, I do have to save my friend after effects. And then <laughs> she goes to her friend and she's like, hey, can we talk? And her friend's like, yeah, we can talk. And these teenagers come over and they're like, hey, what's going on? Yeah. But... How you doing? 
the wrong side of the tracks crowd there. Wrong side of the tracks crowd, which they can only convey. They have no way how to convey the wrong side of the tracks crowd without making them minorities, and they're afraid to do that. Which, by the way, <laughs> the we've had where they weren't just like the black people are the bad ones. Good job. <laughs> No, this time it was the Latino ones. But right, the, now the, the white girl had – there was a white girl with dreadlocks too. That right, was... exactly. And they were just – they like went around them and were like – Whatever they – again, like, hey, Eve, I'm in here. Sex, marijuana. Like just no idea. And for no reason too. We've never right, – Right, right. Characters, just totally crazy people. And so she's like, come on, let's get out of here. And then the young man, for no reason, we don't learn about this. There's nothing that, like, indicates this, starts to chase her to rape her? To, to gang rape her on the lawn, front lawn of some suburban household. You know, like you do. But he's not. Here's the thing. He catches her, right? So this is when she psychically calls out to her dad for the second time. She's like, Dad, come help. <laughs> like Aquaman summing fish. It's a, a fat Native American guy. Um, so she's she gets tackled on the lawn, but he's definitely not raping her. No, she's he's everyone's just, fully dressed. Everyone's fully dressed, and he's not like thrusting or trying to get her clothes off mm -mm. he's just like he's like ah, pinder i got her <laughs> right, right. <laughs> it's like, it's, honestly if it was like the devil made him think that he was wrestling for a state championship i'd be like oh i get it <laughs> he's trying to turn her over to using a half nelson good for him <laughs> good do that use the basics it's good core technique because <laughs> and so he comes – and he come, the dad comes out, drives out of his car. Who knows how he knows where she is? Again, she has the world's weirdest set of powers right. and pushes him off her. And then he comes back and she grabs him. But it wasn't when he was on top of her this didn't take effect. Just when she grabs his arm and then we see the same shot of someone hammering a nail into a hand, <laughs> which – get used to it because we're going to see that a thousand yeah. times. Yes, we are. <laughs> and then he, he's like, what more? He just comes and is saved simultaneously the yeah. way you do. Well, and I love that when the dad runs up, it's like now all of a sudden, out of nowhere, by the way, it starts off just this one guy, but now all of a sudden he's got a couple of buddies with him, and the buddies are grabbing him. And I can just see the dad, who's also the director, he's telling the producer, no, maybe you should have some friends, you know, that stop me and, and, and beat me up so that I can't save her. And he's like, no, I, you know, I think we don't need to spend the money on the extras because everyone's going to buy that your fat ass just got – his ass kicked by a guy who was like still raping your daughter when he did it. No, right. no, we're going to need two big, you know, linebacker guys. Give one of them a tire iron. Give one of them a tire iron. They, you know, nobody's going to buy that. I'm going to get beat up by kids. I right. Can't... Exactly. Listen, look at me. Look at me. Is anyone going to believe that a couple of 19, 20 year old <laughs> men could take me? Come on. Look at this power. <laughs> fact. Look at this. Look at this right here. Come on. Try and take me down. I, I, I got to ask you to stop trying to wrestle us in these meetings. Dave. <laughs> Uh, I know we already talked about it at the first one, and uh, that's why Lucy's not here. Uh, and uh, it's just been a lot of meetings with HR since then. And we're just, come on, come and get me. I'm on you. I'm on you. <laughs> if you were to tell me that this was a guy who wrestled people regularly on the set, I would be 0% surprised. <laughs> so, yeah, he gets hit in the stomach with a tire iron, the classic tool for someone who has never been hit by anything or learns what hitting is like. Because a tire iron could not be a less like useful tool to hit someone with in the stomach. Yeah, right. Just like, just like I don't know, why don't we give him a we'll give him a cricket bat and he'll use it to stub my toe. <laughs> just weirdly comical and insane. So the boy is saved and yeah. then she comes home. And then they don't talk about the fact that she almost got raped. They're just – they immediately forget about it and never talk – well, they, they're going to talk about it again. But they they don't come home and they're like, holy fucking shit. You see that guy trying to rape me? They're just like, so what do you want for dinner? And so they sit down and she's like, so I think the doctor loves you. They have had – and we know because we're told that that date that we saw that we were forced to watch was their third date. Which, by the way, they make a third date joke. And then don't follow up on it. They're like, oh, so the third date. I guess it's getting pretty serious. Are you guys going to? And then it's like, oh, no, people fuck on the third date. You guys going <laughs> to go on a fourth date? <laughs> and then a fifth? <laughs> Maybe. 
baby. How many dates are you going <laughs> to go on? So three dates, and the daughter turns to him, and she goes, I can tell. She loves you. And I was like, wow, she loves him, huh? <laughs> loves him after three dates. But apparently the doctor's in love with him. Uh-huh. And so then all of these people just fucking show up in her living room. Right. Just a bunch. A and, and they're all – you can tell they're all Christianized because now they have really nice hair. The girl with the dreadlocks, now her hair is combed out because, you know, you can do that with dreadlocks. You can comb them out. Right. Yeah. You just – just just you know, just <laughs> use a tango brush. Yeah. And so, the, yeah, the, that she's fine now. And then she, basically the mom sits down and she's like, my son, he was not a good boy. He got – Involved with bad people, but when he touched you, and then she says, like, what happened, and the father just stands up and goes, it doesn't need an explanation, to which I reply, yes, yes, yeah, it fucking no. does. I have no idea what's happening right now <laughs> in this movie or anywhere. So then, after that moment, the devil tricks her into going to dance rehearsal by herself. Well, no, I, I I did want to bring up this one too because the okay, devil good. also appears in her bedroom at one point. Yes, this right, and he's covered in feathers. I remember yes. this. <laughs> covered in terror feathers. He's covered in devil feathers. And the dad comes in because she's screaming or whatever, and then the dad's standing there, and the devil's standing there, and apparently the devil is like the, the Tyrannosaurus in Jurassic Park for a minute here. He's like sniffing around, but can't. See him because right. he's not the moving. De- maybe I don't. It, it was, it the was... devil's vision is based on movement. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Just told her, oh, where'd they go? So oh, fucking. Now they've got the devil on their back, and and this led to I think maybe my favorite line, other than the closing line, um, when when he realized that realizes that the devil is after his daughter, he says to his daughter, "Well, if God has chosen you, man, that's gonna tick off the devil." Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That was this... an actual line written down and delivered in this fucking movie. So you're, you're probably going to get stalked by a shape-shifting Jefferson Darcy from Married to Children from now on. You better do something about that. He's going to show this, up all uh, over the place, yeah. changing shapes. He he is dressed exactly. That. He's dressed like a greaser. I was like, stay golden, devil boy. <laughs> the entire time I was watching him. But in that same conversation, he says my favorite line from the movie, which is, well, you know... The devil's first deception was convincing people he didn't exist, which is not only not true, not the devil's first deception. <laughs> no, no. That is a line from the youth usual suspects. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> which is Verbal kint. the greatest thing that's ever happened is that the people who made a Christian movie were just like, no, remember the devil? Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's, that's in yeah, the Bible. That's the Bible. Yeah, yeah, remember when Kevin Spacey in the Bible turns out to be... <laughs> The devil at the end. Spoiler alert for Kevin Spacey turning out to be the devil. That's the crazy. The craziest thing about this movie is that no point someone turned to him and was like, hey, man, you know that's well, the first deception is getting Eve to eat the apple. You're you're talking about a, a movie that came out a few years ago that's much, much better than this one. Or the Bible. Right. No, it was actually though. It was actually the um, the big black pastor guy that delivered that line because they come yeah, to the pastor black. guy and they're like, "Oh, and he's a pastor. That's right." Yeah, so he doesn't know that. That's no, not, no. That's what makes it even better. Is he's a fucking pastor, and he's like, "I'm pretty sure that it's in the Bible." So <laughs> yeah, remember the devil turns to the camera and he's like, "You thought I was ignoring you." House of Devils. I saw it on House of Devils. <laughs> you know nothing, Jesus Christ. Remember where they get naked in the cave under the fall? <laughs> right. So, and then Raja Ghul tries to blow up the city. <laughs> that, was the, that was in the Bible, wasn't it? <laughs> now, I love, too, that when the pastor finds out that the devil is stalking her, he says, well, shit, where are we going to go that we're going to be able to fight the devil? So where do they choose? A rock concert. Now... Yeah. I had to pause this fucking movie and write this down because the, the the pastor, he slaps down this flyer for this rock concert. And he says, here's where you'll find the devil. And this is what it actually says. These are all the words written on the fucking pamphlet. It says at the top, at the top Battle of the Rock Bands, not just bands, rock bands, high school gym, 8 p.m. next Friday night. And then below that, it says, destroy, metal, crush, with exclamation marks. 
Amazing. So that's what they think the kids are doing these days. And don't forget what he says about the bands. He goes, most of the bands are secular to say the to least. To say the least, yes. Secular. <laughs> you know what I mean by secular. Fucking devil worshippers. <laughs> secular to say the least. And then, of course, there's that amazing moment where she go, he goes, but there is one Christian band. <laughs> yeah. And he, he says the name of them. And the dad goes, the dad goes, oh, yeah, I like their stuff. I've heard them on the radio. <laughs> Which brings up the question, why are they in a fucking battle of the bands if they're on the radio? Right, at a high school gym. At a high school gym. How bad is shit going for them? Who? How much coke and hookers did they buy that they're now like, <laughs> guys, there's a $200 door prize. We really need this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he actually he, he, he says like, but there is one Christian band that we're under contract to say the name of three times in this scene, the Aaron Gria band. Why right. the Aaron Gria band? I'm a big fan of the Aaron Gria band. Yeah, no, it was, it was so one of the Munchkins from Whoville to stop having the Aaron Gria band. <laughs> the Aaron Gria band, and they're here to say the name. Uh, I feel like this preacher had Christianity described to him on a plane. That's how <laughs> everything. He's just like, so there's Jesus? Yeah, I mean, you need more to it. No, I got it. There's Jesus, there's demons, there's devil. The greatest trick he ever pulled was to convince you that he was the dark knight, not the city, not the Jesus that we all deserve, but the Jesus. That we all deserve. No, I think that's just the movie they were showing on the plane. Don't worry, I got it. Bye, enjoy Atlanta. <laughs> and then, of course... At some point, someone was like, hey, we should probably explain why we named our movie See Me Dance. So they're just <laughs> driving home, and he goes, so you got to take your driver's test and get that license plate, See Me Dance. <laughs> and <laughs> that's the, it. That's it. That's why it's – the reason this movie is called See Me Dance is because her license plate was going to say – See me dance. If she hadn't gotten leukemia. And that's why gave, God gave her leukemia, yeah. <laughs> yeah right, because he's like, no, we don't, we don't see need dance. text speak on license So then anymore. we switch over to the rock band concert thing. And again, for the second time, we've now seen a Christian rock band in a movie, and they are exclusively made up of middle-aged men. Yes. Fat, fat Weezer, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's, right. that's the band. <laughs> you will never find a group... You will never see a Christian rock group that is made up of people that do not have 15-year-old daughters. Right. <laughs> it's just like, oh, so the divorce didn't go well, huh? <laughs> oh, my Jesus, and tell me where you are. No one will know I'm balding if I shave my hair. <laughs> <laughs> we can see where it's just skin and where it's not. <laughs> Come on, people. I can solve that clue. <laughs> people can see that? I didn't think people could see that. <laughs> no one can see it. Don't worry. That's so, why we're on a podcast. <laughs> exactly. So now, in case every, anyone's curious, the reason we're going to this concert is so that she can preach to all the secular people that showed up because of her magic preaching Jesus powers, and that will bring everyone to Christ. That's yep. that's what's going on in this scene, and that's why the devil is so pissed. Yep, but we never really get – I I know that because I read the description of the movie on Wikipedia. <laughs> right. The <laughs> devil never tells us that. No. The <laughs> devil just generally doesn't seem pleased with her. The devil at, at no point voices what he wants. He's just like, you can stop if you want to. He's just <laughs> right. like, stop what? And he's like, I don't know, man. <laughs> what it says <laughs> on the card. <laughs> I'm open to be an extra an angel after this if you let me keep the makeup and the get jacket. kicked in the stomach by David Boreanaz. <laughs> so they, so then she saves everyone at the concert, and then she does the same thing at a church. And we have this great moment where a Jewish, very Jewish, yes. very Italian guy in the church, she can read his thoughts, and he's in the church like, I've been coming to church for 43 years. Yes. I don't know what this girl's going to say. That has anything to tell me. And then she stands on stage and is like, mur, 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 like Aquaman for people's Jesus right, again. Uh -huh. And he, he gets on his knees and he's like, I see the Jesus. Jewish Jesus or whatever it is. <laughs> well, now we get my absolute favorite fucking scene in the entire movie here. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <You're> right. <talking. laughs> I'm talking about when she's sitting in the fucking like 
church meeting room or whatever, and the guy runs in with the newspaper. With the paper. Oh my god, I love this too so much. <laughs> and best he goes, best so much stat so ever. Go ahead. Sorry. He goes. Oh, this is amazing. In the last two weeks, murders and rapes are down to 89%. 89%. Biggest decrease in the last 50 years. (laughs) Yes. What? 89% murders and rapes are down 89%, which means 11% of people are still murdering. Right, exactly. I mean, what is is that Jesus powers? She should stop 100% of murders and rapes. That means there are people who her powers don't work on. Some guy just, meh, 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 meh. And he's like, nope, still going to keep raping this guy. <laughs> do, 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 rape, 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 rape. I mean, what? how do you get to 89? Are you averaging murders and rapes, or are they both down by 80? And then they carry on with some more of these statistics about how the world has turned better, apparently, um... The famous pornographer Jackie Treehorn has announced that he's going to give up the pornography empire and donate his millions of dollars to, this is a quote, the families that have been tortured by pornography. That's what he's decided right. to do because of her Jesus powers. Right. And the studios, the movie studios are going to oh, stop yes. making the movies. And I wrote, <laughs> so they're going to stop making movies in porn. So, hell? <laughs> He actually says the next big three movies scheduled for release have been canceled because the studio was afraid they would harm family values. Right. That's an actual line. I had to, again, go back and write that one down. So then they decide we need to get the message to even more people. We need to get it on TV. So they have this meeting with the guy who is apparently the head of a network. Uh They just got a meeting with the guy, the head of a network. And his first line is, Thursday night, that's the biggest night of the week. It's must-see TV. Are you nuts? Must-see TV. To which she (laughs) uses her – now she has Jesus' mind control. Uh She can't just save people. So she shakes his hand, and he's like, I will put you on TV. I am the one who gets to make this decision, (laughs) apparently. (laughs) This doesn't need to be run by anybody except me. So she just so I wrote down Jesus mind control, rob a bank, rape people with Jesus mind control. And then they do a montage where she gets all the TV networks that exist to yes. put her on. Yeah, uh-huh. in the world. Using the, same all, power. the quote is every major TV network <laughs> in the world is on board. Yeah. <laughs> How'd that go for you? Yeah, we got all of them. Every got single all one. of the TV. Really? Right, and they the all power. live right yeah. here near you in yes. the middle of right. fucking no, nowhere. It was really, right. it was really easy. In this city with no buildings, yeah. One song. We're done. <laughs> it turns out they all work at that Denny's outside of the window. Right. That's, <laughs> That's where everyone who runs all the TV is from. I guess so. Uh, but, of course, the devil has other plans. He's not about to let her go on TV and Christianize the whole world. Mm-mm-mm. So instead... He enacts his master plan? Oh, yeah. (laughs) Now listen to this master plan. (laughs) He tricks her. He says that there's no day. Dresses up like a Mexican janitor. Uh Uh-huh. And he tricks her. He says there's no dance rehearsal tonight. And then she goes into the theater anyway and practices dance in the dark. Where the devil does, like, stands there kind of, but doesn't do anything. No, there nothing happens. That's no. it. That's, <laughs> that was the plan. <laughs> well, but then later when she's going to try to go home, he disguises himself as Nazi nurse Ratchet and offers to give her a ride. Yeah. But takes a detour along the way, and that's it. Yeah. No, he brings her into her house, and when he's got her all alone, they have an argument. Talk. And- <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, they have an animated a, discussion. And yeah. then he leaves. Right. <laughs> she's like, literally, she comes into the house, she turns into the devil, and she's just like, she's like, you're, get out of here. You're a loser, she says to the devil. Yeah, she actually does. <laughs> that was in a big this closing. nice mid-century living room that someone's aunt, obviously, was like, well, you can use my living room if you need another place to shoot your movie. <laughs> Is it a Christian movie? Oh, Oh, yeah, don't worry. We remind people every 40 minutes. Okay, good. Because I'd hate to turn it off and turn on a different... No, I got it. Steve Harvey doesn't like it when people get (laughs) his answers. I know. Can you believe these people can't think of a vegetable that's in your fridge? (laughs) Competing against See Me Dance in every moment. 
I got to tell you, the the Devils, the, I actually wrote this down when, when the Devils, like, you know, whatever, mildly reprimanding her in the aunt's living room or whatever. I wrote, like, if she got this shit on tape, you couldn't even get a restraining order against this guy for how, oh. like, how low-key his threatlets are. They just have a very polite conversation yeah, where he's like, less. I'm the devil, don't do that. And she's like, I'm going to do it. You're the fucking David. It's basically, you know what it is? They basically took the conversation that you have with your stepdaughter when, you're, when your wife's out of town. She's like, you didn't get to tell me not to hang out with my friends. I'm going to go convert the whole world if I want to. You're <laughs> get there. Get out of here. And the devil's just like, you know what? I'm going to go play pool. This is fucking bullshit. Do what you want. You're just like your mother. <laughs> Pieces on down the road. And indeed, that is the last we see of the devil. Yep, it is. That was his master plan. He was going to get her into a mid-century living room with pendolphins on the walls. And he was just going to be like, don't do that. And she was going to be like, oh, okay, sure. I didn't realize that was bothering you. Well, you know, I didn't want to ask until I had lured you in dressed as your dance teacher. I felt weird about it. Um, but I'm glad we got to have this talk. Do you want to grab lunch? There's a, there's a Cordoba nearby. And they've got great queso. I could, but I'm super busy. Oh, no, I get it. I get it. I'm busy, too. I got to go give super aids to a baby. <laughs> it's just like the most, so much most polite and boring <laughs> argument ever. I had a more interesting argument with this movie as it was going on <laughs> than the devil had with the girl. And then, and that really starts Act 3, kind of, like, when she's standing in the... um. After she's thwarted the devil and he's disappeared or whatever, she's standing there preaching for a few minutes, and that's oh wait, but before she shows up, she's standing there. They're they're all like, "Where'd she go? She wasn't at dance rehearsal yesterday. Where could she be?" And then she just walks in. She's like, "Hey, I'm here." And they're not like, "Where the fuck were right. you?" They're just like, "Oh, there she is. Great, cool. That was solved." And then fat stage yeah. manager part two shows up. <laughs> yeah, and just out of nowhere, she goes, "Your hair's a mess." Let's start with that. And just drags her away. And again, I want to see her movie. Just the <laughs> sassy, fat stage manager. So she goes up. Sorry, go ahead. She goes up. She's going to give her sermon. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, I was just going to say, like, basically, like, after about, I don't know, an hour into this movie, the writer forgot that he's not just supposed to be preaching. So that's the entire rest of the movie. It's just, you know, like, so she preaches at the fucking devil there in the fucking living room, and then she goes to the church, and she preaches to all of those people, and then she preaches to the makeup lady, and that's it. That's pre pretty much all we're going to get for the last 25 fucking minutes of this movie. It's just uh, these incredibly uninspired uh, uh, sermons as well. Yeah, terrible sermons, although I, she does have some of my favorite lines, which is, uh, some fear death, some fear flying, and cancer. <laughs> <laughs> The usual. Yeah. I'm really afraid of spiders and cancer. I'm always like, oh, they, you know, you feel like they're crawling on you just by looking at them. And also, when your cells turn against themselves, <laughs> those are the two things that I fear. That and black trench coats. Yeah, guys. Blood, blood cancer, blood cancer, and black trench coats. I just, it's terrifying. Oh yeah, those, the those movie with us. Yes. I, this is one of those moments I'll never be able to think about anything else in my entire life. She tells a story about the nightmare. She's like, my dad told me not to see the movie. And in the movie, there were these men with black trench coats. And I was like, what movie <laughs> men with black trench coats? I don't know. I'll never be able to think about anything else in my entire life. I'll be lying. I'll see my firstborn son, and I'll be like, yeah, but what movie <laughs> God, is it scary or is it Show just the Bowling trench for coats? Columbine. That'll right, exactly. That's I was like, Columbine is the trench <laughs> The only association we have with bad trench coats is Columbine. <laughs> she saw a movie about Columbine? Possibly. I, I guess that's about as much as that they're going to give us. Yeah, and I think like they thought that that was a clever moment. She says, I had nightmares when I was a kid about men in black trench coats, and the devil used that against me. And like we're all supposed to be going there, oh, that's why he's got the black <laughs> trench coat on, because oh. she had a nightmare that we didn't know about until just now. They cut to a little girl in the crowd who's like, yeah, no, that's no? true. There <laughs> are scary movies that, that are just like yeah, that. I, I shouldn't have done the same thing. <laughs> that's real. So she preaches, and they put her on all the TV networks in all the world, so everyone turns Christian, and they actually have a thing, like a news clip that they're watching, where like people can't even get into the churches. There's these big, long lines outside the churches where people are trying to get in and pray to Jesus. Right, exactly. And she, oh, she gives us Problem of Evil, 
right? Why do people starve? And then she says, God doesn't let them starve. We let them we starve. Don't. Exactly. <laughs> to which to which from the other room, my fiance just yelled, Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> From the kitchen, I'm sitting in there, and she goes, "We do." And Anna from the other room just goes, "Fuck you!" <laughs> just Anna's two cents for dance. So then awesome. we flash forward to Christmas because mm-hmm. there's snow on the ground. That's how you know. We know it's Christmas because there's snow. And she, it's Christmas. It's Christmas morning, and she's like, "Dad, can I open a present? Just one." And I'm like, "Yeah, bro, it's fucking Christmas. Yeah, you can open all of them now. You can open all of them. It's fucking Christmas. <laughs> when is the not opening? When do the presents get opened in this crazy universe?" <laughs> so she goes to open her presents, and they're like, "Everything worked out. Everyone's a Christian." And because this movie's fucking crazy, <laughs> when they walk in the living room, she's dead. <laughs> yes, yes, she has. Thir- Thirty seconds later of her leukemia. Now keep in mind, we've completely lost track of the leukemia thing at this point. But at no point in the movie does she like degenerate or anything, or get any less healthy, or have to spend a long time in the bathroom vomiting or anything like that. She's just perfectly fine. Or go through fine. chemo and lose her hair. Right, apparently. nothing like that whatsoever. She's just perfectly fine for a year, and then she dies on Christmas morning, and looking spectacular. Like- yeah. Like someone snapped her neck in a stealth. Right. That's how it's, when she's on the ground, it's like you, I'm like, oh, Hitman Absolution, great. <laughs> if a bald guy stepped out from behind the tree and was like, pew, 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 I'd be like yeah. <laughs> I get it. That's how dead she is. She is like, she. Listen, I've watched a lot of snuff porn, and I know when a woman's pretending to be dead. <laughs> And everyone, of course, is terrified and surprised, including her doctor. Right. Everyone acts like someone came in and murdered her. They're like, what? No! (laughs) And then the dad, so the dad lays down on the ground and he goes to pick her up, but... Like, her arms are folded all awkward, you know, kind of yoga-like. Yeah, like a vampire? Yeah, exactly. Like a vampire. <laughs> so She's folded up like a vampire bat. And nobody decided to say, like, hey, hey, let's try this again. You come in and grab her again, but this time don't fold her left arm up under her right arm so it'll be so fucking awkward for her. They don't do that. No, no, he picks her up. No. And then he utters my absolute favorite closing line in the history of ballerina versus the devil movies. Absolutely. <laughs> competitive category <laughs> dance for mama <laughs> not dance once though not once <laughs> not once no several times dance for mama D- different types of emotion <laughs> and then we cut to her in heaven dancing for mama yes and again it shows you the unimaginate the the lack of imagination from christians that heaven is dancing for your dead mom right. <laughs> if i get up to heaven and my version of heaven is dancing for my dead mom. I'm going to be like, get me the fuck out of here. No kidding. Eli, do the salt and pepper shaker for your mom. <laughs> hey, Macarena, Macarena, Macarena. Only forever left to go. So I, I know this is a tall order to fill, but is there anything that we can learn from this movie? Anything that we can take away from the 90 minutes we're never getting back? <laughs> I've actually got got one theme that I thought something I learned. Um, w- you remember this the scene where they were first learning about their shared powers? They have that shared dream sequence together. Yeah, and, so that the director would have yeah. an excuse to put a fifteen year old girl underwater for a minute. Yeah, that, I guess that's learn, probably yeah. why I did that. Yeah. So they they both pop up awake at the same time in the middle of the night, which by the way was three sixteen. I don't know if you saw this, which oh. Greg Robbins obviously saw it was he was the super clever reference to John sixteen, which says oh, well, God yeah. let his only begotten son die for all you people, so you shouldn't complain about child leukemia. So I think that was the theme. Oh, of, all of right. The movie. Yep, it was, yep, was snuck right in there. And, uh, gotcha. I, my uh my the thing that I got from this is that she's the world's worst X man. And I want her to eventually be enfolded into the Marvel universe so that she just shows up and she's like, I'm here. When people touch me, they can I turn them Christian. And also I can make bikers give me a ride. <laughs> and like, yeah, no, we're, you can hang back, bro. We're we don't full. Really we're full. 
appreciate it though. Thanks Ultron for coming down and everything. <laughs> uh, do not validate parking. <laughs> Shouldn't I be for this? Shouldn't I be here in this gifted teenage? No, we're good. No. <laughs> we got a guy who uh, can bend metal. So um, if you can make people believe in an invisible creature, it's kind of working against us. <laughs> Here's what I'm going to propose, and listen, it's, it's your, don't let me step on toes or anything, but here's the deal. Next Patreon goal, $500,000, we do a shot-for-shot shot reenactment of this movie with just me and Heath. Shot-for-shot, <laughs> shot, every character, every oh, two-man show, just me and Heath. That ends with me dancing in a pink tutu for a dead mom version. <laughs> if that doesn't earn us five hundred thousand dollars, nothing will. Come on, guys, you can do it. <laughs> chip in, guys. It it's worth it. <laughs> All right, so now before we let you go, Eli, after all the horrible shit we've invited you on to do, I think it would go a long way towards reestablishing the trust of the audience if they heard directly from you that this is neither a blackmail nor indentured servant type of arrangement. So uh, you're you're here willingly, correct? Um, yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll be Sorry. enough for me. Like, no one was shocking my balls just Blink now. Twice. Just super enthusiastic. No, I'm happy as. As I've said before on other venues, I, I'm, I'm the one who begs you guys. I'm always messaging Noah and being like, so I saw this ad for a movie where a Christian little boy uses a new gun to Japan. I know we're not going to get a chance to review it, but oh my God, see little boy. The ending of little boy, I don't know who this woman was. I want to know her and love her for the rest of my life. But I went to little boy. And when they when they have the moment at the end where the priest goes, and that's a bomb that they called little boy. There was a woman in the second row who went, oh, <laughs> just started screaming in horror. What? <laughs> she wasn't ready. She just didn't see that ready. coming, huh? It was the best thing in the world. Sorry. <laughs> I am here. I wanted to tell your viewers that I'm here voluntarily. In fact, I, I am constantly bothering these guys to, to put myself through more and more punishment. <laughs> well, I will say, I will say, once Little Boy is out on video, we're definitely going to have to do that one because I've heard some good things. Oh, I can't. I can't ever stop thinking about it. I can never. It's so good. Awesome. All right. Well, Eli, thank you again for all your help. Oh, thanks for having me, guys. And when we come back, we'll do other stuff.